And when I see rock, I see happiness. I never thought I would have this sort of relationship with the outdoors. Rock climbing is a sport that tests your body and your mind. In the last few years, rock climbing has entered the mainstream. And for the first time in 2020, it was an Olympic sport. This explosion in popularity means that more people are trying it than ever before. But that doesn't mean that everyone has access to the sport. There was a time that I didn't go for a year because I was getting so many threats. Everyone deserves to be safe and feel safe when they're climbing. There are folks in the climate community who are dedicated to making the sport better and more accessible for everyone. And they're doing it around the country, one climb at a time. This is Favia Dubik. She's a professional rock climber and has been bouldering for a decade. When she's not climbing, she's a physician, coach, and writer. This wasn't engaging my lower back. But on the rocks is where she most wants to be. I found climbing just through luck. I didn't know rock climbing was a thing my entire life. I tried it and I fell in love instantly. So what part of that first experience rose to the level of instant love for you? I love the sound of my shoe and my hands hitting the rock but there's nothing like the puzzle. In climbing, there's lots of pieces to that puzzle. Like one is safety. The climbing part is the best part of the puzzle because there's many ways to do a climb and you have to figure it out. I love that sense of there's only one thing that's important at that time and it's making the next move. That's the only thing that counts. And I have to be very confident and sure about every movement I do because my life is at stake. The fear, the excitement, I love all of it. I did have to take a break because uh, I was diagnosed with advanced stage cancer in 2012. And I said, if you survive this, that's what you're gonna do. You wanna get back in the rock. And that's what I've been doing. What a promise to make and keep with yourself. It's simple. I think joy brings more of the, the deep, deep happiness I feel when I climb. And for hardcore climbers like Favia, even though she does it as a solo sport, it's also about community, bonding with other climbers and being with other people who are also obsessed with rocks. Rock climbing requires trust. I have. I'm here to trust that my spotter will catch me. I started noticing that people wouldn't even recognize my presence in the group. Well, either you get ignored or sometimes it's been hostile. How can you even trust if you're not even feeling welcomed in your community? Rock climbing got its start in the 1880s. And as the sport grew, the ways you could participate grew as well. But despite the diversity of types of climbing, there's still a stubborn lack of diversity when it comes to type of climber. A recent report found out that of the 7.7 .7 million climbers in the US, less than 15% identify as a person of color. It has definitely been a big source of turmoil in my climbing career. I check the parking lot for the vehicles. Yeah. And so that way someone can keep track and have a suspect list. <laughs> but this is like part of my ritual as a black female. Wow, uh, thank you for sharing that. You're peppering it in with a little laughter, not because it's funny, I assume, because it's absurd and, and painful. Yes. Now this is hardly a new problem. For many years, keeping folks of color away from outdoor spaces, that was the law. National parks in the Jim Crow South, including Shenandoah National Park and the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, were segregated spaces until the Civil Rights Act of 1964. For my first few years as a climber, I just didn't know any spaces. I didn't know any people. Like, I was the only black person. Kind of felt like, oh, there was like, probably one per state or something. Today, public outdoor spaces are still overwhelmingly white. According to the National Park Service's own data, 77% of all visitors to national parks are white. Only 6% are black. There's also a long tradition of climbing routes being named by the first ascensionist. To name a route is named by the first person who climbs it, who successfully goes from the bottom to the top. The names often reflect the rock formation or the location. Think of the North Face. Others even reference pop culture, Sharknado, for example. And then there are route names I'll generously refer to as unwelcoming. Tar Baby, Panty Wall, The Whipping Post. There are a lot more like these all over the country. Some are so bad, I can't really say them here. A lot of places where I climb, there are racist names, 
but there's really, really more sexist names. Mm. Are there any safe for work examples you can share? I think so. Like, go for it. Uh, pumped full of semen, daily dick dose. <laughs> <sighs> it's so exhausting. Welcome to Rock Matters. On today's episode, we're going to discuss the Olympics. Rooting, which is a really cool training technique. Climbers like Favia are making sure everyone has access to the sport. When I first started, I was just trying to survive. I was out there alone, trying to learn climbing, learn the outdoors. Favia, what's your thoughts on the knee bar pad? First, let's discuss what a knee bar pad is. And so I help other people climb better in a safe community. And I travel the country teaching those clinics. Climbers have also been sounding the alarm that routes with names like Aryan Race have to change. There are online guidebooks that we now have flagging systems that we can say like, hey, that's inappropriate. But even on our own, if you can't change it, you try to like abbreviate it so you don't have to say that really inappropriate thing all the time. It's like saying the N-word instead of saying the N-word. Exactly. So that's what we're doing now until books can be republished. And in 2021, 50 offensive route names in West Virginia were changed, including Aryan Race. The new names were published in the new edition of the climbing guidebook, New River Rock. The whipping post route name in Colorado was also renamed to Black is Beautiful. For the ones that have been changed, I assume like the changing the name didn't destroy the rock. Exactly, exactly. Like when I speak up about racism, I get more back. So I think that's why these names just kind of like go unthought of because people are too afraid, don't know how to fix it. And then there's the few that like really want to stick with it. Meanwhile, organizations like Brown Girls Climb, Flash Foxy and Melanin Basecamp are raising awareness of the discrimination within climbing while also creating supportive and safe environments, not just for climbers of color, but for women and the LGBTQ community as well. You know, we're all kind of fighting the same fight. And it's for us to come together and to, we can talk about our experiences without having to explain like why that's racist. And that's like the most exhausting part. So the people of color who are climbing, the black people who are out there, just showing up, helping other people see that like, it's for everyone and everybody. In the face of such hostility, what is so worth it for you to keep going back? I love climbing and I wasn't gonna let them take that joy from me. I definitely wasn't gonna lose the thing that wakes me up, that keeps me going. Then they would win. And I'm not gonna allow for that. <laughs> I've been a black person in very non-black, very white spaces. I've been a, a poor person in very wealthy spaces. And I kind of know that unwelcome feeling. I also have felt the sense of fear from those who've historically participated in the space that I'm there to take something from you. I hope if there's someone out there who's afraid that it's really not about stopping people from engaging in their joy and in their sport and in their relationship with the outdoors. It's about making that relationship possible for more people. Thank you for watching. If you want more, check out these other videos on our playlist. And if you want even more, go to the PBS video app or pbs.org to watch full episodes of America Outdoors with me.